He is a two-time Bassmaster Classic champion. He is an MLF Heavy Hitters winner and Angler of the Year, as promised. This week, Jordan Lee joins me on... I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Okay, so here we go again. Welcome one, welcome all, friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks. You're all welcome here at the Awkward Leonis Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. Welcome in. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy Hump Day to all my humpers that tune in week after week. This is the 137th edition of this particular show. And um, whether you're a humper or a first-time listener, I hope this show helps you get through the hump that is Wednesday, halfway through the week. Um, obviously, this is in the United States of America, Thanksgiving week. So um, for any of our U.S. listeners, which there are many, and I am thankful for each and every one of you, most of you are probably stuck in a car traveling somewhere or in a flight, just getting somewhere or waiting for someone to show up at your house because uh, obviously a big, big holiday and uh, I say happy Thanksgiving to all my fine American friends. Um, for those of you wondering, Thanksgiving in Canada was a few months ago. Um, but that being said, my family loves football and they love turkey. And I work a lot in the United States. So we have two Thanksgivings. Because what's better than one Thanksgiving? Well, well, of course, two of them. Um, we've been doing that for, for years. We celebrate Double Thanksgiving. Um, speaking of which, lots going on in the fishing industry. Lots continues to go on in the fishing industry. Uh, on a personal note, I want to thank the uh, Ontario Bass Nation. Um, they had their big uh, annual meeting with all the club presidents get there and everything. And they invited me to speak. And I used to be able to do a lot of that kind of thing. And just because my schedules got busier, I haven't been able to... Um, I used to be doing seminars all over the place. Well, it was nice to get back there, and I and I didn't do a seminar. We had more of a a Q and A, which is which is always more fun, um, and you get the answers to the questions you ask. And um, and this one got a little spicy. I mean, we talked about a bunch of stuff going on in the fishing world, um, but it was a lot of fun. Everyone turned their phones off, and 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 I was able to speak freely, so uh, it was a lot of fun. I thank each and every one of them for having me out there. Not just for having me out there, but I thank... I always refer to the Bass Nation as the roots of bass, and it truly is. That's the foundation, not just for the anglers that compete. I just belched while I'm talking. That is very unprofessional. I'm sorry, I've been fighting it back, and I just... I let it go. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse me, let's move forward together. So as I was saying about that group of people... Um, it's weird when you got a belch and you're fighting it and you're not like, I should stop talking about it. It's made enough of a thing already, <laughs> but a group like that, when you get with a group of people like that, all the different presidents from clubs, you hear about different events they're doing, different initiatives to get kids into fishing, to expose kids, to give the gift of fishing to people that didn't get it. Um, so it's great. So and I thank you all for having me, but I thank you more for all the work you continue to do. And not just the Ontario Bass Nation, but Bass Nation around the world. Anybody that's working to share this sport with people, I thank you. Um, so that was fun. That was fun. Um, also, in kind of sad news, but also celebratory news, David Fritz retired from the Bassmaster Elite Series. He is the 1993 Bassmaster Classic champion. He won five times at Bass. Um, he is a crankbait genius, literally um, a savant when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but I wish him happy trails, and I thank him for every minute he spent in this sport. Um, a great inspiration to me. I mean, I spent a lot of time watching him growing up. And it was honestly a childhood, uh, childhood honor, dream to introduce him. 
uh, on stage. And I'm sure we'll see more from David Fritz in the future. Like I said, he is a crankbait savant. I mean, he made the Fritz side. He made uh, some of the most famous crankbaits in the world you can thank David Fritz for. So uh, I thank him for everything he's done for this industry, and um, we'll see more of him in the future. Um, and with that, a lot of people have saw because last week Larry Nixon retired and Jordan Lee got his spot under the Legends exemption. So as soon as the Fritz news came out, everybody's like, well, who's taking his spot? Well, Rick Clun will take his spot because uh, Rick Clun, the last time they had cuts, I guess the year previous, Rick was inside the cut, so he didn't need to use his Legends exemption. This time around... He needs to use his legend exemption because last year was a tougher season for him. But it is going to be his 50th season of competition at Bass, which is unfreaking believable. And I can't wait to see that. I mean, our two legends this year, of course, Rick Clun and Jordan Lee. Talk about polar opposites of careers. Um, <laughs> there are two very different points, but two very deserving legends because. To explain to people, I mean, people seem to get hung up on that whole legends word, but what it means, if you win a classic or you win angler of the year, you get a point for each. So when you take somebody like Rick Clun, who's won four classics and an angler of the year, he has five chips. The guy with the most chips, obviously, is Kevin Van Dam. He's won four classics and seven angler of the years. So he could come back, well, for the rest of his life. Um <laughs> Which would be nice. And just by me saying that, I'm sure it's already going to become a... Yeah, I think he said... Personally, I obviously there's part of me that would love to see Kevin back. Um, I'd love to introduce him again. I'd l love to have him on the Elite Series. But there's also part of me as his friend that I'm like, this dude has, has had an incredible career. And if he wants to go and not compete at that level anymore... So be it. We should show him that kind of respect. But that being said, let me know in the comments who you think he'll be back one day. Yes, no, maybe. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, without further ado, I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you get to where you're going and you get there safely and you have a great time. Because let's be honest, we all have a lot to be thankful for. You look around the world right now and... Um, Getting in a disagreement every once in a while about forward face and sonar or some of the other trivial crap, just the fact that we have the freedoms to argue about stuff like that shows how blessed we all are. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you, whether you're celebrating it this week or you're not celebrating it. But this show will be a celebration because we have none other. As promised. I mean, sometimes I fail on my promises, but this time, this time is not one of those times. The back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classic Champion finally comes back to the Bassmaster Elite Series. The one and only Jordan Lee. Not only is Jordan Lee coming back to the Bassmaster Elite Series, but he's willing to sit outside and talk to me for a little while. Thanks, Jordan. You're welcome, man. Yeah, it's a nice day. I, I don't mind being outside. So, I would imagine that the last, you know, this is comes out on Wednesday next week. We're, we're recording this right after the announcement, basically just a few days. But I would imagine things got busy for you, text-wise and email-wise in this last week. Yep, it did. I figured that was going to happen. I figured it was going to be, you know, obviously blown up. And, you know, I, I, I wasn't, didn't run. I, I knew that was going to happen, but I, and I knew I was going to get a lot of texts and a lot of different, different comments on social media platforms. And, but all in all, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I know a lot of people are, you know, excited about it. And if, if my phone was silent and, and the internet was just dead silent, and you didn't see the positive messages. I, you know, I, I would definitely feel like something's wrong. Uh, but got a lot of positive uh, feedback, and uh, you know that's what that's what I'm here for. And you know, I definitely like to to see the positivity and and, and the fans excited. 
Um, that's probably the number one thing. But me personally, I knew it was going to happen, but I wasn't like jumping for joy that my phone was just going to be blowing up. Um, but I knew it was going to happen. So, it, but it's all good. Well, why do you say that you weren't jumping for like, you, well, you don't like don't dealing really with like, this kind of stuff? Well, I don't like to be in the spotlight for maybe just changing <laughs> leagues. Like, I mean, you know, normally you're in a, the, the bass fishing world too. We all know it. Like there's not a whole lot of, there is news. Don't get yeah. me wrong. There's news every week, but there's not, you know, when anglers leave, uh, you know, certain leagues and go to another, then that really gets people going on, on the social media. And I, I'm just not, I'm not a, a drama. I'm anti-drama. Uh, so I, I guess I wasn't excited about that, but, um, but I was excited, you know, from my standpoint, I mean, excited, nervous, uh, had a lot of different feelings, um, because it is a big deal for me personally. And, um, but yeah, so I mean, if that answers your question, I mean, not even really a question, but that's kind of how I felt um, going into it. Why did you choose to make the cho- make the move now? Um, I really felt like you know last year I I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed the five fish format. That was the first year we did it on the Bass Pro Tour, um, and. You know, I honestly, I just feel, feel for me deep down, like that's where, what I enjoy to do. I fish a lot of local tournaments, fish, fish a lot of different tournaments throughout the year, whether it's 10 boat tournaments or, you know, 200 boat tournaments. And I just enjoy that. Um, and I just felt like that's kind of where my heart was. And, you know, the, for the people that don't know and a lot of people don't really know because it, it can get kind of confusing when it, you talk about exemptions and uh, you know anglers coming back to the elite series like you know it wasn't on the table uh, a couple weeks ago I reached out to Bass and was just seeing my options there if that was you know if if that was even on the table and, and, and it wasn't you know uh, Rick Klein, Larry Nixon both of those guys you know both those guys were, were planning on uh, coming back to the Elite Series. So it, it was it was kind of out of the question. I was thinking about the next year, you know, possibly fishing some Opens and having that option because, you know, it, there's not one thing that says – that jumps out to me says, hey, you need to do it right now. I wasn't really unhappy, um, but I, I wanted to fish for, for five, and I thought if the opportunity was there that – you know, maybe this was the right time to do it. Um, and I want to be excited about, um, you know, the tournaments and excited during the tournaments and, and, and everybody's got a different feel on it, but that's just where I was at. And it's just really kind of a gut feeling. And, you know, I I got the call that said that Larry was not, you know, going to take his exemption. So I had some pretty quick decisions to make. But I just that was all going through my head, and it really just came down to the format, and it came down to, and, and another the really the toughest part of it all was, you know, I fished against this, the, the group of anglers for nine years, you know, uh, all the quote unquote you know veterans of the sport, you know, that have that fished Bassmaster for decades, and 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 you know, fished MLF for five years now. So, um, and I got a lot of friends, you know, I mean, I can name them off, but I mean, that's the guys I've spent a lot of time with. Yeah. So that was a, that was a really tough, uh, a tough one, but all in all, just my, my personal, I guess, happiness and, um, you know, where I'd get excited, you know, during an event and things you really don't think about. Was, I mean, I'm assuming you reached out to, not just the organization, but more importantly, all of those guys, a bunch of those guys. Was it kind of like, I would imagine some weren't happy you were leaving. Some probably understood it. Some didn't like how tough was that? Yeah, it was, you know, I talked to to several guys and it, it happened. So it, it was so quick that, you know, I had a couple of days. So I called some of my closest friends, didn't call all the anglers. And kind of let them know what was going on. And they're like, man, I hate to see you leave, but I totally understand. 
you know, and understand the scenario and they support, they were supporting me, whatever, whatever, you know, was best for me. But I was, you know, kind of like, I don't, I don't really know. You don't know. You can't look, predict the future and, and see what's, you know, I guess, I mean, best for you. I mean, it's just a personal decision. And, and talking to, talking to Kristen, I mean, she didn't sway me one way or another. So it was like, thanks guys. Thanks for really telling me what I need to do. Nobody told me what I needed to do, um, which I guess is good. But, um, you know, I, I got a lot of texts, you know, and then the guys get it, you know, and we all know that, you know, there's basically two two organizations right now that, you know, the major pros are fishing at. And if you get the opportunity, I think a lot of guys, you know, they were in my position probably would have made the same call. Um, and that's just kind of what it came down to, but it does, I mean, deep down not to be fishing against some of my best friends that I've had for 10 plus years for the first time. That was, that was kind of the hardest part for me to, uh, to get around. Was the decision to leave bass five years ago easier than this decision to come back just because you weren't leaving alone. Like you were leaving with a big group. You know, the guys who left, uh, I was kind of thinking about that. Yeah. When, when there's a bunch of, a bunch of guy anglers on the same page and doing the same thing, it's definitely easier to be like, okay, well, you know, they're going to be in the same spot I am. Um, and, and, you know, there was definitely, um, when we, when we made that, you know, the, that switch, it was, <laughs> there was a lot of upside uh, that potentially could have happened that, that didn't. And a lot of guys were on the same page on it. And this time, obviously it was just me and I knew it was going to be highlighted just me, social media and, you know, um, and, and just, just the vibe and the anglers, you know, all the anglers are going to be paying attention to just me. So it was a def. it, a lot of different feelings there. Um, just knowing the spotlight was just going to be on me this time. But uh, I think they're both really hard decisions um, because, you know, it's it's everything. You know, it's everything to me. I mean, bass fishing is my full-time job and making that decision on, you know, where's the best place to fish. And, I mean, there's a lot that uh, – lots that goes through your head, but um, – Ultimately, I'm I'm happy about it. A um, couple days now, I've had the smoke kind of clear. One or two days, um, and I f- I'm feeling good about it. It's just you coming with the legends exemption, but obviously we're finding out that there is Randall Tharp, B Height, a a bunch of guys that are that group that you fish against that are that are trying to qualify to get to the Bassmaster Elite Series eventually, and And I have no doubt that the majority of them will make it there. The shocking thing I think yesterday, and tell me you don't want to talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, that's cool. Ah, But when when, um, Tharp made his announcement, he like straight up said, the reason I'm leaving is because of inconsistency. And wait, I wrote it down. It's the only note I took down for this whole conversation because I wanted to quote him right. Inconsistency yeah. and lack of integrity in rules enforcement. Does that shock you? No. Um, you know, the the it, it doesn't shock me, I mean, to be to be honest, but you know, there was a tournament this year that upset a lot of anglers. We all know the 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 Cayuga event. Um it upset fans. It was uh, a tournament I know that major league fishing just wish it would have just never happen. Um, it was a there was a lot of different scenarios letting them letting these betting smallmouth go. Uh, it sounds great, you know, and I know that's what a lot of anglers are talking about when you're talking about rules. There wasn't a lot of other incidents throughout the year, but that tournament letting these betting smallmouth go. They're in the water. They're easy to catch. You can catch them time and time again. You know, I was on the rules committee there, or pretty much a, a angler board. We we said we knew this could potentially happen, 
and we enforced a rule that said you can't catch the same one twice. That rule was taken very loosely. I, I was, I mean, the anglers overall were really upset about it. Don't think it was handled correctly. And, um, and, and so I, I'm sure Randall's talking about, you know, maybe just that one incident, but maybe there's a few more that I don't really know about, but you know, that tournament really it hurt a lot of guys because it was, you know, when, when you don't take the rules, um, the rules, uh, you know, super serious and have, you know, uh, a foot on them, then it can affect, you know, how the standings end up at the end of the year. And so I'm not surprised that, that Randall said that by any, by any means. And I, I understand that that wasn't really for me personally, wasn't, um, an issue that I would, that would leave an organization or stay. Uh, but obviously some anglers, you know, think different. When did you first start thinking about coming back? Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had it in my mind for years, but didn't really know the right time. Didn't know when it would happen. I thought it would, I, I definitely didn't think this year cause there wasn't the opportunity wasn't on the table, but, um, you know, the, the, the format changing this year and, definitely some key pieces in the organization changing um going forward didn't see try to look at it from a distance three four years down the road it's hard to look into the future but um it, you know it's been on my mind just never knew really the right time and uh like i said i i had a good time last year me personally i had fun fishing um won a won an event there at St. Clair. And uh just overall, I mean, I think a lot of the guys I mean a lot of guys that I mean my buddies, we thought, hey, going forward we can build on this. Got got some huge changes that that that, that affected a lot of it, you know, and I and so when the, the opportunity came up, I'm like, man, maybe this is maybe this is the year I just need to um, you know, make make a switch and um just thought it was probably the right time, but not an easy decision. No, I wouldn't imagine so. And especially for you, because I mean, and and I'm not putting anyone in this class, but it's a lot easier from the outside. If you, if you're just, you know, if you're not doing well there, I mean, that, that system exactly. doesn't work. It's so easy, but dude, you, I mean, you won pretty much everything there is to win there. Um, yeah, my, my job security was there for sure. Like, I mean, I was, I was second in overall points behind Jacob, um, you know, for overall, uh, you know, points standings. And so, you know, yeah, if you're, if you're maybe in the bottom 30, 40 guys that potentially could get cut, you know, they announced they wanted to go to 50 anglers in a couple of years or in tw by 25, um, so if you're on the outside of that, you're like, yeah, if, if you know, if, if the opportunity comes up, I, I would love to probably make a switch. But for me, yeah, it was different because I'm, man, I'm well inside of it. And, um, but, you know, I had to look at all that too, you know, job security where, uh, you know, where could I definitely fish? And I, on both sides, I know I'm, you know, if I, for some reason had some, um, bad years ahead that you know I, I could still be around but that that was definitely in the back of my mind but yeah it's different when you're you know up there and you know you're you're going to be okay you're going to be in the league and not going to be at home you know watching so um it is different what what has it felt like over the last number of years you see stuff like i mean everybody knows the guys that have come back but you see somebody like Christy come yep. back, qualify, and and how well it's worked out for him, obviously. Yeah. Um what when you were over there, was that something that you even do you even pay attention to that? Or like oh, yeah. it, or does that give a pressure to you? Like you're watching literally you it did grow the sport, but it did it didn't grow it as much for you guys. It grew it for those 80 dudes that and Jason Christie isn't part of that group. 
obviously. But what I'm saying is, is there's a lot of, of people that weren't a big name in this industry when the split happened and are much bigger here today. Does that feel like a pressure for you to deal with or, or did you just ignore it? Um, no, I, I don't think I ignore anything um, in, in the sport at all. I mean, I pay attention to it all and I mean, I'm a fan of it all. And I think yeah. a lot of, I think, I think that gets twisted a little bit because I know a lot of our, you know, a lot of the anglers that, that left knew that there was going to be an opportunity for new guys coming up, yeah. whether it was good or bad that, you know, I th I thought it was good that, you know, guys can definitely get their foot in, you know, at Bassmaster and make a name for themselves. Um, would have been not saying that they wouldn't have if, you know, a lot of guys left, but um, I, I thought it was a positive, you know, thing on that end. And, you know, Jason coming back, you know, he, he had a, he definitely had a gut feeling went with it and i think everybody was excited i was excited because i knew how i was i was more excited for jason probably than any other classic winner um just for the simple fact that at hartwell i knew he was he was supposed he was supposed to win that tournament i mean the the ball was in his court and the year that i won and you know it just didn't happen that last day and i know that was heartbreaking for him and so to see him win back at Hartwell, I mean, that was, man, I could not be, I mean, that I'm still like, I'm smiling because I'm like, that was awesome. And I was really excited for him. Yeah. So that was really cool. And I, you know, I think the guys that left before they, you know, they definitely have all benefited from it. You know, they, they've done really well. And, um, and yeah, you look at that and you're like, but at the same time, you know, I feel like on the same end, I, you know, from a sponsor standpoint, from, you know, doing well at Major League Fishing, like I have too. So um, I think it can go both ways. But, you know, those guys definitely made um, – that seems like they're happy with their decision and they've done really well. Yeah. And I I echo your sentiments when it comes to Christy Willett. Like just being beside him on the stage – in both those situations, you know what I mean? When it didn't go his way and, and to yeah. see him win, it was literally that I always said to people, it, it honestly felt like I watched him, his body just like change, you know, right in front of me where he was just like this huge weight that had been on his shoulder. And I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard this story. I'm sure I've told you at some time, but one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire Bassmaster MC career, 15 years or whatever it has been now happened at that classic because I'm the drama queen that I am. You win. And that year we were in the round, right? So there was exits off all sides to the stage. And all week I'd been getting yelled at by every photographer because no matter where I stood, there was no right spot not to be in their shots. So right. I go, so I had learned to go to the back of the stage. And I go to the back of the stage and I'm literally laying on my knees back here screaming, unbelievable, like a ridiculous wrestler or something. And dude, the most embarrassing moment ever, because all I hear is, I got to get through here. And Christy's giant leg steps over me. And I was just like, I felt horrible, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about insult to injury, but um, he he made it right. Do you think? You returning, and especially if the return goes the way you want it to go, which is success, and that's what you've seen your entire fishing career, no matter where you fished. Do you think you returning puts pressure on other guys to return? You know, I I don't know the answer to that, but I feel like I know, I mean, without being – cocky i know i have you know i'm everybody knows that knows me i'm not like that but i do know that i have a presence you know in the fishing industry and i do know that you know sometimes certain guys decisions may influence others and i i hope i'm I hope i'm not an influence um in in that regard but uh i think guys are going to do what they need to do and and Look, it's really hard to do what Jason did and um, any of the other guys that qualified up through the opens. I mean, you're gambling 
you're gambling on yourself. And, uh, you know, guys with legends exemptions that could potentially get back in that way is definitely, um, I, I could see maybe a little, I don't think I'm going to influence those guys though. I think they're going to do what they're going to do. And I don't think I'm going to have much, um, influence just like maybe Brandon and, and, and Jason and the other guys that, you know, came back from major league fishing. Um, I don't think they had a huge influence on other guys to, to, to switch, but, um, so yeah, maybe I don't think I'll, I'll probably have that influence. Is your worst fear in life for people to say you're cocky? Cause dude, no matter who, whether it's on BTL or wherever, like you spend a lot of the interview saying, I don't mean this, this way. Like, no, I don't stay up at night thinking about that, but I, I know, I know the person I am and I'm, I'm true to that. And I don't, I don't have, uh, there's nothing in me, I guess, deep inside that says, Hey, I'm the man here. And, you know, I'm the shot caller. And this is what I'm going to do. And everybody else should do it. Like I'm the complete opposite of that, but you know, just to be fair, I have to throw it out there so it doesn't get twisted because, you know, certain words could be like, Oh, Jordan Lee said this on, on this podcast. And so you gotta, you kind of got to throw that out there, especially the people that don't know you. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a weird world we live in now and everybody seems to be, does that bother you that, I mean, one of the biggest negatives I would say, I think there's a lot of positives that came with the split <laughs> and I've, you know what I mean? Like, and people might be surprised to hear me say that, like it was one of the hardest things personally ever for me to mm -hmm. go through because I watched friends walk away and it's just normal. I mean, our relationships, I mean, I'm still friends with all those people, but I just, it, I mean, it, it just changes. You're at a different factory, but one uh -huh. of the biggest negatives that I think, and I just think it's culture today is, it's just all negative. Like everybody wants to make everything a war. Yeah, they do. I just, it, it is, it does suck that that's kind of the, uh, really the world we live in now. And, um, that people just feed off that, that negative that negativity and, you know, love to watch it and love to be, you know, on their phones and, you know, laughing, ha <laughs> ha, you know, that guy sucks or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And just with the, with all the anglers that, that left in that scenario, unless you're in that, that scenario and, you know, you're in the middle of it all on both sides, like, you know, you really didn't understand completely, you know, just by the internet, like you're just a keyboard warrior and it's easy to sit behind there. And, but you know, it is what it is. That's, that's like I said, that's the world we really live in. Unfortunately, the, the negativity gets more, gets more views and, and more people to, uh, to watch than the, the positive things that happen. So just how it is now. Yeah, no, you're right about that in, in every, in every instance, um, in every instance. Yep. So what, what are you looking most forward to coming back? You know, I hadn't really thought about it. Um, I don't know. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be different for sure. It's going to, like I said, you know, I wanted to say a lot in my my little uh, four or five minute video that I put out of, you know, me coming back. I, I, I could have talked for 30 minutes, um, but I figured that's what these podcasts and everything's for. But, um you know, I, I guess the the main thing I'm looking forward to is uh, just getting back to getting back to my roots, really, and you know, just getting back to basic tournaments, really, and you know, seeing seeing a lot of people when you weigh in, that'll be cool. Um, you know, having an opportunity to fish a classic again, you know, that's going to be definitely looking forward to that. Uh, so I guess there's a lot on the horizon and, and maybe there's some stuff that I don't really know, but when it happens, I'll be like, okay, this is, you know, this is awesome and get me pumped up, but, um, really just getting back, getting back to it. And, you know, like I said, in my, everybody knows, I just, I love the sport. I love fishing and, uh, 
I'm just excited to get back to that and, and see a lot of the faces that I haven't seen in five years too, you know, um, still have made contact, you know, on the phone, like, you know, with you and, and Zona and Sago and, you know, Lisa Talmadge. I mean, Lisa was my first tournament director 2009. Um, my first year I was still in high school and she was running uh, the ABA trail and we became friends then. I mean, I was, I was 17 years old and we stayed wow. friends, you know, throughout, you know, 15 years or whatever it's been, but she was always pulling for me then. Um, so, you know, I, I have that relationship there that, you know, I, I really respect Lisa and I always loved, I always loved her back then. And I know she hasn't, hasn't changed. And anytime I see her, you know, we get to talk, um, and yeah, just seeing the, you know, those faces and the people that, um, I, I am looking forward to that. Yeah. It, it, and I, I'm glad you mentioned Lisa there because I think sometimes people forget like just how much she's done in this industry, you know, it, like she didn't just become the tournament director at the elite series. I mean, she's weighed thousands and thousands of fish long before that. So yeah, it will be good to see you back with bass. Um, are you worried like that you'll get exhausted? And I don't mean, I'm not picking on you about three days versus four days. I mean, but we don't have any lunch breaks or anything like that. that you yeah. become a used to. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we had the off days in between days one and two, which a lot of times I didn't love, but there was times when you're like, man, this, <laughs> this is nice. Um, the year out, there is no lunch break. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to really, you know, put my head down, but I, I'm used to it. I mean, I, I think, uh, I don't think I've ever been in shape, but, um, uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to try to get a little bit in shape, a little bit, maybe. Um, I see all these guys working out, running, and you know, I'm over here just dipping zins and <laughs> drinking cokes. But now I've tried to, uh, you know, I've tried to maybe get a little bit, a little bit more in shape, just for that reason. And maybe that's what I do the next couple months. But uh, yeah, it's definitely exhausting fishing a week straight you know, practice tournament, four day tournaments. That's going to be different. You left. And like you said, it was all about the group of anglers. I mean, that's why the majority, I mean, to try and make things different, but also to stay with that group of anglers and compete against the group of anglers you would always compete against. But I have to believe in some ways coming back and competing against almost a full new group. You know, there's guys like Christy and Paul Nick and stuff. You've competed against Hackney mm -hmm. and Brosnick, name it, you know, Ike. Um, but the majority of them are, are people you've never competed against. Is there like in your competitive spirit, like, is there part of you that's like, I'm, I would imagine that would get you up for competition almost a little, a little more. Yeah. You know, I've kept up with it a lot and I know, you know, I know this new young group of anglers coming in with the, you know, with the technology now that's available and just how good they are with it and how they can really dissect lakes and how hungry these new group of anglers, I guess, kind of like I was where, and, you know, they're every day, all day, that's what they're thinking about. So, um, I feel def I, honestly when I started in the Elite Series, we had some great rookies. I mean, Brent Ayler, the year that I that I came in, he was yeah. a rookie. So there were some great anglers, but I think down the list and year after year, I think you have some special guys come up, and that's how it always has been. But um, there's there's a lot of great talent coming up, and a lot of great anglers that you know are just getting getting their career started so i don't think it's going to be like i don't have the mindset of me just coming in and just you know throwing down bows left and right i, I do feel like uh it's going to take me a little time and i hope i hope that's how it goes but i'm i'm a realist and i know every year is different and the the way that the sport has changed and evolved like you still have to 
you know, fine fish and do that. But the technology has changed it. You know, yeah. you see, I know you talked about it before with the veterans, you know, you see guys that, you know, were stone cold killers and have been for decades and it's changed, you know, uh, it's changed the leaderboard. And, uh, so I, I do know that going into it, but I am excited to see guys and man, there's guys that I fished against 15 years ago that are now a part of the late series that I haven't, I didn't fish against, you know, I fished against maybe before, um, you know, the leets in college and in, I mean, high school even. So, I mean, these are guys that I've been around and I'm, you know, I'm excited to, uh, you know, to, to get back in it and, you know, see new faces. How different are you now? versus five six years ago when you fished at bass as a person as an angler i'm sure you've evolved i have you know um i don't think i'm just completely different but i am uh you know having a having a kid now um you know makes you makes you see things differently it's not all just about fishing to me now um and you know my number one goal now is just to be a great dad i mean and and degree be a great husband it really is like that's like my number one focus and trying to find that balance you know is can be tough at times like you know tournament fishing being a parent you know uh balancing all that like kudos to these guys that you know i look back when i was jumping in the elite series and you see a guy like Chris Lane, he's got four kids running around. He's out there winning tournaments left and like You're like, dude, how did you do that? Like, I can barely keep my head on with one. So, uh, but when it comes to tournament fishing, you know, um, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit more settled when things get bad, things are going wrong. I can kind of rebound it a little bit better and I'm not as hard on myself maybe as I once was if, if I have a bad day. I can kind of take that, turn it into a positive, maybe a little bit better than I used to, not just throwing rods and anything like that. You know, I, I can handle it a little bit better and move on and, you know, look forward to the next one and, and really try to uh, – the my mental game has gotten – if it wasn't strong then, it's gotten stronger uh, now where, you know, things are going great. I know how to build on it things are not going great know how to kind of change it around so uh that's a big part of you know pro fishing for sure um but yeah that's probably how i kind of evolved a little bit more throughout the years if, if you could go back to pre-collegiate jordan lee you know before you really yeah i mean when you were just fishing tournaments at home and you could give that angler that person some advice what what would that advice be? Man, I mean, looking at my career to this point, like I would I would have never believed if I would have told myself then like how it has went. And uh you know, I, I always had like I always had this gut feeling like this is what I was meant to do, but you always have to in the back of your mind, well, you know, what if it doesn't work out or you know, what if things don't go the way that I dream of it. But um, I would just tell myself to really, you know, put my faith first if I was talking to myself then and no, really no matter what, no matter what happens, like good, bad, or indifferent that, you know, you're going to, you're going to find your way and just give you that, give, give myself maybe that comfort when you're a young up and coming guy that just has this dream and this is what you want to do. But I mean, sometimes life can take different, you know, uh, different routes. And, yeah. um, but I, I mean, that's pretty much what I would tell myself, I think, and just tell myself that, you know, you're going to be okay. You just do you. That's probably what I tell myself. When, when did it, do you remember the moment in your childhood that you, you know, you knew fishing was something so much more than just a hobby. You know what I mean? Was it the first fish you caught? Like, do you have an actual moment? Yeah, I got some moments. I mean, you know, the first year that I really fished, uh, like a trail, I've told this before, 
story before, but the first year I fished a trail, um, uh, the, the year Elisa was, uh, it was ABA weekend series, Bassmaster owned, you know, the weekend series. Lisa was the tournament director for yeah. the division. You know, there was a lot of, a lot of boats, 120 boats, 100, 150 boats, some of them. And, uh, you know, anglers all over the state. And I, I won the points that year. Um, you know, when I was, I was 17, just going into college. And when I, when, when I won the points that year and won a tournament, that really gave me like, wow, this, you know, I'm, I'm just a kid. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not, I didn't get any help for these lakes. I don't even know. I didn't know where the boat ramp was. And it was just like, man, things clicked. And I was like, it was just like, just natural instinct, like every tournament. And, uh, you know, didn't, I mean, my tackle box was, I mean, I had a couple crankbaits in there, a couple jigs, rusted hooks. Now, I didn't know what changing a treble hook was. And I, and I did really well. And so that kind of gave me the confidence that, man, you know, maybe there's something here. And then the Auburn and all that was starting up. And, man, it gave me just that much more excitement and much more uh, promise to keep pushing, you know, and keep, you know, really fishing hard and trying to learn as much as I could. That's kind of when I knew maybe there was a chance in this and going down to Auburn and fishing with a lot of those guys and learning a lot, you know, that really uh, told me there was maybe something there. Does it, does it shock you how, because I mean, you, you were definitely one of the forefathers of the, that program, the college, you know, making a career coming from like it was just a few years before you and your brother made the classics through the collegiate system that yeah it, that wasn't even a thing but does it shock you like because as big as it was for you i look at it and i'm like as amazing as that all was for you it seems like it's even it's just continued to get bigger and bigger year after year yeah for sure i mean I, I I really didn't know what was, you know, what college fishing was going to do in the future and down the road. But uh, just the opportunity that, you know, it gives these – it gives college anglers to – just to make that next step and just to get their name out there where people say, hey, I know this guy from college. He fished at, you know, the school I graduated from or – and it just gives you that name and that notoriety that you, you wouldn't have any other way. And it's, it's, it, it's really just the best stepping stone probably to get into professional fishing really um, is, is being one of those top guys in the college world because people know your name. They'd see you up there in the, you know, whatever circuit you're fishing. And it's just a great platform. Um, it, and it made it really, I wouldn't say easier, but it, it was a, it was a better stepping stone for me coming in like to the, to the opens and the, the lead series, having that, you know, that Auburn name, I guess, and fishing for Auburn behind you. So, um, I think it has just grown and you just see how many high school and college teams there are now compared to when I was fishing. It's just, it's mind blowing and, um, it's not, it's not a bad thing. One of the things that is highly talked about with you, I think, um, no secret. I mean, dude, you are one of the most naturally talented anglers I've ever seen in my life. From the first time I saw you casting a bait, you, you're different. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to be like, I don't want to, but you are. Yeah. But, but the other thing that sets you aside, and I've made a joke out of it over the years and said you might be frustrating to compete against because – your mental game and you talked about it getting stronger, but dude, you're just like, you know, I'm just going fishing. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, but you don't yeah. seem to get rattled in competition. Is that just what it's like in the outside or literally when you're competing? Do, do you ever get rattled? I, I can get rattled. Um, I can feel, I can feel pressure and, uh, for sure. I don't show it maybe in my emotions is, enough because i know hey after today there's going to be tomorrow there's going to be another tournament and i'm not so focused on just 
I've never had that like competitive drive to where I'm just like that killer instinct where I'm just like win at all costs. Like I'm going to step on this guy's throat. I'm going to cut him off, you know, uh, anything like that. Like if I see somebody where I'm, I was going to go, I'm, I'm just going to take a ride and go to the next spot. Like, you know, and I, so I don't, I don't get rattled in that sense to where I get spun out. I see somebody catching them. Oh, good for him. You know, I'm happy for him. And, you know, just kind of being sarcastic with that. But, you know, I've never really had that. I just want to go out there and do the best I can. And, you know, I want to win the event and I want to do well, but I want to have fun with it too and just enjoy, you know, each step. But I I am competitive, but I'm more competitive against the fish. I'm I'm going to get mad, you know, more at the fish than where I landed this, in the standings, you know. Um but during a tournament, no matter how big or how small, you know, um, every circumstance is going to be different. But I've tried to keep a level head, and I feel like that's really helped me throughout the years. Good, bad, good tournaments, bad tournaments. Um, having that level mindset is really, it's helped me along the way for sure. What's the most rattled or pissed you've ever been during competition? Oh, I I can think of a, a major league fishing event at, at Lake Travis where I think I broke a rod. Um, I, I and it was it was on camera, but I had I don't know I had probably six or seven really good fish come off, uh, uh just one after another, fishing behind docks or I think pitching a drop shot around. And I just kept losing everyone. Like, I literally could not keep a fish on all day long. And they were good ones, too. And, man, I lost it. I lost it that day. I lost it going back to the rental house, cussing left and right, packed my stuff up. I slung gravel out of out of there at Austin, Texas, and was just on the road. Um, I was really mad in that one. I think I was mad. Remember Elite Series tournament and I fished at Bull Shoals years, you know, probably two thousand maybe sixteen. We fished there. Just had a horrible experience there. Nothing went right. I mean, I remember leaving Bull Shoals, waiting my fish and just getting out of there. I was home at probably two AM. Uh both those two come to mind, but you know, those don't always come around. And and sometimes you just don't get on the bite. I can, I can swallow that a little easier, but you know, if you lose seven, eight key fish in a day, that's when I may break. So just heads up. <laughs> what, what do you do to recover? I'm I, and I feel like I know the answer to this just in, because you're such a mellow dude. Like, does it take you a while? Like you hear guys who are like, if I have a bad one, it takes me half a week to recover. Like an, or, <laughs> and they never recover almost like you talk to them about, a tournament three years ago and they, you can still see it. it it's inside yeah. their head. Does it take you a while to recover? And if so, like, how do you recover from something like that? No, I think now it doesn't take me, you know, about a bit. Um, you know, you just kind of think back and I've, I've always really tried to learn from my mistakes too. you know, every, every, every event I treat it more of a, you know, and if you're doing every tournament and you're not succeeding every tournament, then that can change your confidence and anything like that. But if you if you go to a lake that you've had success on or a new lake and you go out there and you struggle and you see what you did wrong, I treat that as like, OK, going forward, I know where I messed up here in practice. I know where I messed up in the tournament. I'll try it. I'll try it a little bit different next time. And um I've had success now, you know, at lakes that I really struggled at and vice versa. You go there one year, you have a tough year, go down, go there the next year, you win the tournament. Um, and it's just a, a mindset almost of what I do wrong. What, what I, how did I not approach this lake the right way? And you just, you know, see what, what guys did that succeeded. It's easy to see now. You, I mean, you, you turn on a, you turn on YouTube or you look at, you know, a gallery, what guys were throwing. It's pretty easy to say, oh, that's, that's what I did wrong. And 
just put that in the back of your mind and go to the next one. Do you think you learn more from a good one or a bad one? Oh, uh, both. I mean, I, I, I think you learn. I mean, you, you hear people say you, you learn more at a bad one, but when you're out there catching them and you're really catching them good and you're in that top five in the tournament and you got the bite dialed in, I mean, you learn a lot. You're, you're catching a lot of good quality fish. I, I say you learn more than a good one. Um, or, but on a, on the other sense, and on, on a bad event, um, you can look at it like I did absolutely everything wrong. I fished the complete wrong depth. You know, if I'm have the scenario in a couple of years, same lake, you know, I'm going to do the complete opposite of what I did. And, that can help you too. So I don't know. I think both of them can, you just, you just have to have that mindset of when you do have a really rough one and you're down and your confidence is down, you say, I suck and the lake sucks. And that's what I always say, but, uh, what all anglers are going to say, but I think you just really take a step back and try to just see where you went, where you went wrong and helps you going forward. Yeah, and I, I think that people take the – I mean, you have no choice but to learn from a bad one. I mean, there's so many uh -huh. other distractions from a good one. Um, and for those wondering, you can get your This Lake Sucks hat at where, Jordan? Yeah, your it's on my website. They may they may be sold out right now, but uh, jordanleefishing.com. All right, all right. We'll put a link to that in the description. There you go. Thank you. Here's a shocking – I mean, I don't know if it's shocking, but – a lot of people, I mean, one of the greatest things that's happened on the Elite Series the last number of years is a small Japanese man that is always smiling and always positive, and that's Takumi Ito. Mm -hmm. And, dude, you have a relationship with him. Talk to me about Takumi Ito. Yeah, so um, I call him Taku. But uh, when when he came to the States and, was, of course, was fishing, and I, I think Sega reached out to me and said that, you know, hey, he wanted it wanted to get up with me and uh you know he was going to be in the area of alabama and i said awesome you know i've always wanted to fish you know and i, I knew he qualified for the elite series and I, i've always wanted to fish with a japanese angler just because you know they're so ahead of where we we're at from a you know a electronics tackle uh everything really they're everything's just so cool and dialed in and you yeah. look at our stuff and it's just trash pretty much. But, um, so I wanted to fish with him. So we went out and fished and he's, you know, he stayed, stayed at the house for a couple of days, his wife and his son, even when they came over, he stayed at the house probably three times, but his wife and his son, um, stayed at the house uh, as well. Um, and just, you know, became friends and, you know, he was, you know, helped me out, showed me some stuff and I helped him out um on a few things and you know i just want to see i know how hard it is somebody like that and i just could i was trying to put myself in somebody like that shoes and it's like you know you come to the united states you, you can barely speak english you're trying to come out here and catch bass for a living you can't even you can't even i mean if i was going to japan right now and trying to go there and fish for a living and left my family and everything behind and you know, didn't know how to speak any Japanese. I was just like, man, if I can help out this dude, I will, because that is incredibly hard to do. Um, and, and I just couldn't imagine really just coming to a different country. So we, we, we stayed in touch. Um, of course, you know, uh, you, you know, throughout the year and, uh, I look forward to seeing him. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the Elite Series, dude. I, I think it's great. It's great news. Everybody's excited, obviously. Well, most people, like, I'll ask you this. You said you checked out social media. There is some people that are like, screw him. He left bass. Yeah. There should be no Raider. exemptions. I mean, Randy yeah. Blockett made a video literally saying that. What What do you say to, when you see stuff like that? Who, who, said, who made a video that said that? Blockett. Who? Randy, Randy Blockett. I'm just being funny. Uh oh, oh, uh, 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 I got you. See, <laughs> you got it. Uh, man, I, 
you know, what, whether the comment. I am. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I had to throw it in there. I had to make you giggle on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, you know, I knew probably there was going to people say that. I, I was not going to lose sleep. There could have been 100 people that said that. All I know, I mean, it's hard enough on myself. I'm hard enough on myself, like, with, with this decision and put thought into it. And people say, well, you, there's not a lot to think about, but there there really is, like, uh, from my standpoint, I kind of walked through what my mindset was at all on it all, but I'm excited. Um, you know, it took me a couple of days after, and I think I'm getting really, I'm, I was really probably more nervous about the news coming out and just how I knew it was going to be a big deal. And I was ready to kind of get past all that and just look forward to fishing and look forward to, you know, seeing a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time. And that's just kind of where I'm at, but there's always going to be those people that, you know, don't think you deserve it. And, you know, if the rules weren't like that, then, you know, maybe this scenario wouldn't have came around, but the rules are the rules. And, uh, you know, they weren't, you know, Bass was not going to, and, and this is one thing I said too, to, uh, said to Kristen or said to a close friend, you know, when I, when I reached out just to see my options there at going back, they have a, a, a set rule, uh, you know, two exemptions, I believe, per year of uh, Legends exemptions. Um, that was for this year. You know, that could always change, but they weren't like, well, just because Jordan wants to get in, you know, you know, he's a two-time champ, we're just going to let him in. And that's one thing I did, res- I respect. And I think all the, I think all the fans and uh, anglers, both sides could, res- should respect it. If there's a rule, they're going to stick by it. And, uh, you know, I, I do respect that. Yeah. I think the whole legends exemption people have got so wrong. Like they're literally people like I've watched a video where people are like, is boy duck going to use his legends exemption? Like you have to apply. There's two spots, but the spot has to open. So for example, like if Larry stayed, like you said, you don't get to, you know, there's, there won't be another legend, but that being said, I'm betting you'll be in the top 70 for angler of the year. And then next year, another legend spot should open up because you won't be in said spot. Uh-huh. But uh, I don't know. I was kind of shocked to hear you on B- on your BTL interview with Panger, your guy, your guy. Uh-huh. Panger. <laughs> on that interview, you said <laughs> you could never top the moments you've had on the classic stage. Do, do you really believe that? Man, I, I believe that the, the the first classic and and just how how that all went down, I kind of knew then that I probably had even the next year or well, both those years. I mean, I feel like that's just going to be I'm going to have hopefully success along the way. But you know, I feel like I peaked at that at that tournament or one of those tournaments as far as just where the sport was and. You know, uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like that that moment, that was like that win at, at, at Conroe was probably just, I mean, that was going to be tough to beat. Um, and I, I just always would probably feel like that. I mean, just that feeling, being that age, not knowing, you know, where you were at in the sport. You know, you, you had some a little you early success, but – to have that like moment and that come from behind, I don't think that's probably ever going to be topped. Uh, the weight, you know, or the place, you know, being that far out, I just feel like that was one of those tournaments, man. That's going to be tough to top. It it was a special, and and I think the coolest thing about it is the whole time you were backstage. I mean, I've joked about it. We joked about it at the time. Like you were had to beat fourteen dudes, so you were just like, hey, I'm going to sit up here. And then yeah. they're going to come in. They're going to, so you didn't even have to deal with the nerves of somebody who's like spends an hour thinking, wow, I think I've won because you literally were laughing it off, but then it happens. And, and one of the yeah. weirdest yet most awesome moments of my career was on that stage at that. I mean, at some point, I mean, your brother runs on the stage, your whole family's up there. And I always try to like step away and let you guys have the spotlight but out of yeah. nowhere, some family member grabs me, and I'm li- literally dancing around <laughs> with all of you on the stage. And I'm like, wait a second, yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. Um, yeah. 
it was an amazing moment, man. It was. And being in Minute Maid Park, you know, yeah. being in a baseball stadium like that, you know, all the fans right there and just coming in with a monster bag. I mean, that that's going to be tough to top. And and I know that, and I've known that for a while, and I'm I, I'm okay with that. I mean, that was a uh, that did did a lot that did a lot for me and and my family, and you know, um. So yeah, I, I'm always thankful for that that moment, but uh, it'll be tough to top. Is it is it strange for you when you you know? And I don't even know if it's happened. I assume it has, but you're just flipping through the channels and you see a game at Minute Maid Park, and you're like, oh, right yeah. there, right there, third base, the pitcher's mound. That's where yep. literally your life changed. Yep, um, and I we I pointed it out to Kristen when I was watching, you know, a playoff game, watching the Astros and somebody else, um, and saying, yeah, that's that's where it went down right there. And, you know, how cool that was. What a cool stadium. I remember how mad they were getting at the grass. Um, <laughs> which which is crazy. I just went to a concert in, 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 in Atlanta at uh, uh, the Field Avenue Stadium there, uh, Truett Park, I believe is the name of it. But um, went there for a concert, and they put down, like, this giant, you know, uh, not tarp, but a, uh, uh, I don't know. You could walk on it, step on it. You weren't gonna hurt anything under there. And I'm like, why didn't they do that there? Because I remember they were really upset over their grass. You couldn't yeah. even like get. <laughs> <laughs> they they get real mad. No, but there was a story about that because, at that time, I think the people that run the park. We're told by by the Astros that we're putting new turf down for the season. So they thought, well, this will be perfect. We've got the Bassmaster Classic. But they thought there was more time in between. And then they realized they had put down their new grass and that yeah, they didn't they didn't want us on the grass, that's for sure. <laughs> it, do you think it's fair that just by coming back, just by throwing your hat in the ring? You're a two-time Bassmaster Classic champion, and dude, there is millions of people, millions of anglers that would like GD in a bottle. If I could win two, I would be so satisfied. But do you think it's fair that just by you coming back, all of a sudden it's going to be, when's he going to win three and four? Yeah, I think, you know, we all, I think people outside the sport like to speculate and and look at that, um, you know, it hadn't been a thought until I guess now potentially, you know, um, that could potentially happen at some point, um, uh, winning number three, but I know, I mean, I've made, made quite a few classics, different championships along the way. And, uh, I know they're not just gimmies to make it. You see great anglers every year that are right on the line barely miss it out by a long shot you got to catch them every day so i think you once you make one then you you kind of put your mindset on that um and I'm, I'm excited to to try to make try to make it this year you know try to make it for 25 and and you know just look at the tournament and and see what happens during the event but um i know it's hard i mean it, that's that's a extremely hard term to win with the pressure and the people that are out there on the water and, you know, a lot of factors and variables, but uh, it, would, it would be awesome, but, you know, only time will fail. Could be 10 years from now, you know, you may get a shot. So. Yeah, well, 10 years from now, how old are you 10 years from now? You're still young. I'm still, I'm still, I'm going to be about 43. So I'm, I'm still going to be, be right there. But, uh, yeah, so we got some time ahead of us. When do you think anglers peak? Like, at what age do you think professional anglers are at their best? Man, I think before they peaked at, uh, before you saw guys in there, you know, when, when Kevin was on his run there, the best run of all time there in the 2009, 10, 11, you know, he was probably in his early 40s, I would say. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 30, early 40s. Um, and, you know, you see guys, you know, they really caught fire around the end. 
Um, now I think it it's going to just continue to be happen younger and younger, uh, you know, just because technology's taking over every tournament being one with forward facing sonar almost. Um, so I think the older you get, the more out of tune, out of touch, you really want to do that and look at it, you know, play that game. So, uh, I think it's just a little younger now, you know, probably thirties, uh, early mid thirties. I think, you know, I think those guys are just going to continue to be tough to beat. Where are you at with the, the forward facing debate? I mean, there's people that think it should be out of the sport. There's people that think it should be unlimited. There's people that think it should be limited. You can use it, but you only use this much. Yeah. What is your take on it? I haven't really cared, I guess, either way. I mean, believe that or not, right? Uh, I, You know, at first I was like, you know, Man, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have it. Other guys had it, you know, that were running Garmin. I was Lawrence. We didn't even have it at the time when it came out. When you really knew how deadly it was, and now everybody's got it. But you know, there's some anglers that have really uh, adapted to it and really put that in their game. Um, and you, we always say, man, are the fish really going to get used to it? And but on some lakes, you you really can't avoid it. You know, you can't say I'm going here and just turning it off. I mean, some guys may, but you know, overall, to me, I think a limitation would not would not be a bad thing if you said, "Hey, you can't have five active targets on your boat." But at the same time, um. I don't think I don't think it should just go away completely. I think you know it's it's just part of the sport now, and that's what makes it cool is those tournaments that maybe everybody's doing it and really focusing on that, and you see somebody up on the bank catching them catching them shallow, and you got a whole crowd pulling for that guy. And uh, those are the tournaments though they're they're going to be cool, but you know some of the smallmouth events are going to be tough from a fan standpoint. We all know that those are hard to watch, but I think the more technology evolves and maybe we get to watch, watch their screens and see what they're exactly doing and them talking through it. I think you can teach, you know, have that, that teaching aspect of it where people, the fans are wanting to engage because they're wanting to learn. They want to learn how to catch more fish, but you have to give them a reason, have to, you know, have to give them a a visual of it to really be able to teach them. So I think if you can teach, I think it's great because I, I think the fans are going to watch. So that's where I'm at. It, it's, I think people that don't use it, I mean, they think it's a magic wand where you, you know, you're spotlighting deer. It's not at all like that. The deer has no choice. You spotlight them and you shoot them. The fish yeah. has to buy it. Like there's, I don't even want to get into the debate, but I think yeah. the thing that is amazing when you use it is just how much you learn and how much we had wrong, like for so long where, you know, like, I mean, the fish come up on that shoal. Well, yeah, some of them do, but there's a bunch of them that just <laughs> roam out there. What is the most yeah. shocking thing you've learned with that technology? Man, I've learned, I've learned a ton. I, Really just the way fish react to your baits and say, you know, especially on lakes where fish are hard to catch, like, you know, Smith Lake's a great lake to use it at where I fish a lot. But just how many fish will run right up to your bait and look at it. And those spots are so smart out there that they'll run right up. You think they're going to bite it, they're going to bite it. No, they turn off. I And they'll turn off on, you know, 90% of the baits and then you find that one that maybe they like a little bit better and you get maybe you know 20 or 30 percent of the fish to eat it's what's it's what's crazy just how many fish are looking at your bait and don't commit now it's just mind-blowing that's that's the thing that shocked me and you're, you're like man I can't imagine me being out here without it 
and and just how lost I would really be. Um, that's kind of the big shock now. Well, and you can't you can't put the genie back in the bottle in a lot of ways. I think you know, like because trust me, as a guy who commentates on tournaments, there's times I hate forward facing sonar. I'm like it. It's a bunch of dudes texting, basically. It's what it's like talking to somebody that's texting. But I'm also like, do we just go back and say, start start talking about the things that we believed before, and now you'll know that, you know what I mean, that they're not true? It's it's wild. I mean, do you think it's the biggest change in our sport, like maybe even in the history of our sport? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I would just say how dominating it is to be able to see out around your boat in real time what's going on. I mean, under the water, like, that's that's the biggest change for sure. I mean, it's just part of it, and uh, it's made fishing really, really cool when you're doing it. Made it sometimes not so fun to watch, but I think there's opportunities there to, to teach people. And that's what people want to see when they turn on the screen. They want to they want to be to turn on, you know, the TV and watch watch fishing, watch professional fishing. They want to they want to learn something, you know. They want to uh, take their home lake when they, they they only get to go on the weekend or maybe you know one time a month. Like when they go, they want to be like, well, I saw this on. I was watching, you know, wh- whoever you know do this and on live scope or active target and it was really cool i just think if you can teach i think it's all good but if if you lose that teaching aspect if the anglers kind of lose that and the organizations lose that then you just start losing makes your job a lot harder makes our job a lot harder you know makes everybody but if we can learn to keep teaching i think it's all good um so that's that's kind of my two two cents on it you grew up a fishing geek like a lot of people in this industry, obsessed by this sport. Who was your guy? Like who before you fished classics or anything, but who was the guy that it was the guy? Man, I remember I remember coming. I never had like a post I didn't have a poster of anybody. Um but I'll I, I man, it's tough. I mean Iconelli, Iconelli, when he won, he won Gunnersville one year, and you know we went to a classic another year. And just watched Van Dam, and I don't know. I mean, just that whole era of guys. Like it didn't matter who it was. I didn't ever follow somebody. I followed a guy maybe if I was on the water who was doing really well. Um, you know, I remember following Aaron Martins and at Gunnersville and Van Dam and different guys just watching them. I was just a fan of the sport. I mean, there wasn't that one guy that I was, like, just obsessed over, but uh, just all of them, really, to be honest with you. When you were watching that go down, did you just know that one day I'm doing that? And I don't mean to – I know you're going to fight the arrogant thing. This isn't arrogant. I just mean in your heart. In my heart, you know, that was always a dream because I I knew I loved it so much, like, that – you know, this is what I'm supposed to do, but don't know exactly when down the road. And I'm not going to like jump to it when I was 17 or 18. I wasn't like, let's go. Like, I'm ready to, to jump in it and fish against Van Dam tomorrow. Like, I wouldn't, you know, and I see so many younger guys that want to do that. But I'm like, man, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to, to fish in, in school potentially. And, have fun down there and like I wanted to do that and then after that see where I where I was at but I mean I just loved I loved it I love watching it love learning but I wasn't like in the moment just ready to just uh, jump across the, the stage and I knew I wasn't ready you know all right well, it's all official. You are coming back to the Bassmaster Elite Series. You, you're going to be doing podcasts and interviews and stuff for a while, I'm sure. But after that, what's the plan? Are you going to pre-practice lakes, or or is it just family time in the holidays and right into a new season? No, I, I think I'll go, uh, you know, 
Salida Bend, that lake just, honestly, it scares me to death. I mean, it's just so big, and those big, massive lakes like that, like, they're really hard to break down, and you got so much in your mind, like, I only look down here, and that's a lake to go probably I need to go to. Um, I'm hoping I can go, you know, spend a few days on each, play to Bend Fort. As the year goes on, I probably won't, you know, do that as much. But I've always had – if I can get the year started off decent, I can usually roll with it. But um, I'll go pre-practice those, hopefully, and, uh, you know, try to get the ball rolling and not just be completely lost or clueless going into, you know, practice. Well, dude, I thank you for your time. Uh, I – Thank you for coming back to Bass. As you know, and I don't mean this, well, it's going to sound bad, but I, I thought you were crazy for leaving. <laughs> but I think, yeah. I mean, but I, do, I also never judged anyone on their decision because I don't think anybody should judge somebody. You made a decision that you thought was best for you and your family, but welcome home. Welcome back to yeah. Bass. And I can't wait. To, this is going to be a fun year. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited about it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Jordan Lee. There you have it, the one and only Jordan Lee. Look forward to having him back on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I thank you for spending a little time with me here this week. If you want a little more, Jordan, you can check out uh, an interview that Panger did with him on Bass Talk Live. So check out that channel. Speaking of Panger... As you guys know, we host, well, maybe you don't know, and that's why I'm telling you. We host a weekly show um, called The Cull. It's a weekly sport fishing debate show. We take different topics and we debate them. Um, It's much shorter than this. It's like 10 minutes long. Uh, But this week's show, we debate, Panger thinks that the spoon is the most versatile lure in bass fishing. Um, My take on it, well, you'll have to tune in to check out The Cull to see how off base Panger is this week. We have a lot of fun in that show. Uh, appreciate you guys supporting this show, that show, BTL, all the things that you guys support in this fishing industry. I am thankful for all of you. Have a great week. Enjoy being. And as always, another guy I'm thankful for, the one and only Bob Cobb. Take it away. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?